Hey team, Jen here. I wanted to bring out um, a couple symbols from Junchiro's short story, The Tattooer, today. And I wanted to focus on the foot um, and also the mask in this short story. I found myself really paying close attention to how the young girl's um, foot was portrayed and why, why the foot was such a point of interest um, for Seikichi. And also the mask. Um, in the beginning of the short story, the Kabuki theater is mentioned, and I couldn't help but to draw connections between the Kabuki theater and the, the mask that is used to represent the girl toward the end of the short story. So I just wanted to pull out a couple salient passages for you that relate to the foot and the mask. And to ask you the question about um, what you think the significance, what you think the meaning is of these two symbols in the story. So the first passage that I want to read to you is in our edition, it's on page 81. This is our edition here. And it's about, <clears throat> let me see, it is the third full paragraph on the page. Um, in the upper part, it says, One summer evening during the fourth year of his search, Sekichi happened to be passing the Hirasei restaurant in the Fukugawa district of Ito, not far from his own house, when he noticed a woman's bare milk-white foot peeping out beneath the curtains of a departing palanquin. To his sharp eye, a human foot was as expressive as a face. So it's this moment at which Sakichi sees or glimpses um, this little girl's milk white foot that lets him know that this is the woman, the female body that he's been waiting for. Um, and so I wondered if you thought what you thought about why the foot carried so much value and moreover uh, what the foot represents in Japanese culture um, that he could be drawing from. The second passage that I want to read to you is at the top of page 83. And this is the moment in which <clears throat> the little girl is mentioned as um, having a mask-like face. And I'll read you this passage, the very, very top uh, second half of the paragraph that began on page 82. It's toward the end of the paragraph. Seikichi had closed the doors and taken up his tattooing instruments, but for a while he only sat there entranced, savoring to the full her uncanny beauty. He thought that he would never tire of contemplating her serene mask-like face. Um, so right there are two things. First of all, that he calls her beauty uncanny. And for those of you who have read Edmund Burke's Inquiry into the Sublime and Beautiful, um, you really kind of should be invoking there this sublime aspect of the uncanny here, that it is, there's something that seems kind of otherworldly about it or unearthly, or, uh, you know, unhuman, unheimlich, um, unhomely in, in terms of the uncanny. So there are many ways to read the uncanny, and it's interesting that that word is used to invoke her beauty, that it's used in conjunction with beauty, um, because oftentimes the uncanny brings an aspect of terror or horror, and definitely disquiet, discomfort, so I think that, that it's paired with beauty here really signals something important. And also that her mask-like face is, um, is indicated as being serene in that same kind of section is very, very interesting to me. So it seems like there's a tension there, and I would love to know your thoughts about that. <coughs> Excuse me. Thanks for listening.